taco salad can be an easy summer meal. Doesn't heat the house up too much, easy to do. But one of the things we often do to ourselves when we do that is we add some very high fat ingredients. So, and one of those is the taco shell that we use. Today I'm gonna to use a tortilla and bake the shell in order to make a actual shell like this that we can serve our taco salad in, which is a little bit more elegant and something that's kind of fun to do in a restaurant. Most of those, however, are fried. And so actually eating those is not necessarily a good choice. So what I've got here is just a great big piece of aluminum foil and I've wadded it up and trying to get around a three inch ball, diameter ball. I'm going to make it a little flat on one side just so that it doesn't roll around on me. And then I've got a nice cookie sheet. Now I'd like to make four of these but only two of them are going to fit on here at a time. Take an eight inch tortilla and basically just drape it over that ball of aluminum foil and then I'm going to spray it with a little bit of non-stick spray and that will help it brown a little bit. These are going to go in a 425 degree oven for six to eight minutes. We want to have some browning and some crisping happening. They're never going to get quite as crisp as those that you would get at uh, the, uh, uh, the fast food restaurants uh, or a regular restaurant, but you can get them nice and brown like this. And, and I've got some that are a little bit thicker. Uh, if you roll them out a little bit more, you're going to have to be more apt to get a little bit uh, uh, crisp, more crispness to them. Also, once in a while, they'll puff up a bit in the middle. Doesn't matter. If you can still fill them, you may want to pop the bubble a little bit so you get more filling in there. Again, these are going in the oven for 425 for six to eight minutes, and you'll come out with something that uh, is really nice for a taco salad. I'm going to use uh, ground turkey in this one. Often we use ground beef. This is another way. Use either very, very lean beef or drain it really well. Uh, you could use any kind of meat in this, however. I'm just using ground turkey because it's got one of the lower fat profiles. Ground chicken would work as well. But again, ground beef works too, as long as you make sure that you uh, drain any fat off or start with a very lean one. We want to get this so that it started to brown, and I'm going to speed through this just a little bit and add a couple of more ingredients to it. Lots of times we use the uh, taco seasoning mix, and the herbs and seasonings in there are, uh, to be honest, a little bit stale. So instead of using that, I'm going to use a different source uh, of seasoning to that. Uh, I have a tablespoon of chili powder. Now, if you're using a meat that you need to drain, you need to do that before you add this. There's a tablespoon of chili powder to it. I'll stir that in just a little bit to get the, the blending going. And then instead of the seasoning packet for all the other seasonings that I, I would like to, to have in here, I'm going to add a half a cup of salsa. Any kind of salsa you like will work. Homemade salsa is great. Canned or bottled salsa is fine. Hot, mild, extra hot so hot that your eyes cross. All of those will work, whatever works with your family. And then we're just going to let this brown up nicely uh, and, and make sure that everything is completely cooked. Once you get that meat well cooked, it doesn't have to be quite as blended as you are going to finish it off with. I'm going to add uh, about a cup and a half of red kidney beans. Any kind of bean will work. And adding the beans at this point adds a lot of flavor, it adds texture, but it also adds a lot of fiber. And that's one of the things that we're really interested in happening. This is simply going to be heated through. There's not going to be cooked long enough for those flavors to really penetrate the beans in the traditional way that you think of when you cook beans long and slow. But we do want them to get nice and heated through. And while that finishes heating, let's go ahead and, and construct our salad. I've got about uh, four cups of greens. Now you could use I prefer them shredded because that's a traditional way with tacos and uh, Mexican food. But if you want to tear them, you can. You can use uh, any kind that you like. I'm using iceberg because, again, I'm going a little bit traditional here. I'm going to put about a cup of that inside our taco shell. And then we're going to stir in or place over it some of the meat. And then top that with whatever you like, all the traditional toppings that uh, we usually think of, a little bit of cheese. Now the trick here is to use a lower fat cheese and not use a ton of it. I'm going to use a few things that aren't quite as traditional. I've got a little bit of green pepper. You might want to try radishes if you're doing this in the springtime. A little bit of green onion. Stir that in. I've got a little avocado. Now, I did not make guacamole because I didn't want some of those ingredients in here, but if we use a few pieces of a chopped avocado, then you get that uh, wonderful color and that smooth texture without adding quite as much fat as you would have otherwise. 
I've also got a little bit of uh, black olive. And finally, I'm going to top it with a little bit of chopped tomato, which right now are terrific. If you wanted to, you could also add some additional salsa. If tomatoes weren't in season, some additional salsa on that would again be a really good choice. Very easy, relatively quick. Even the chopping, because it's minimal, takes a minimal amount of time. I hope you'll try this one. It's a taco salad for Oklahoma Gardening. This is Barbara Brown.